I do want to give you a little tour of Moby Flight before we get too deep into things, uh, just to see kind of how the ropes work. So the most important things are probably this row right here. You have, um, and this row. So you have run, how you run your configurations, test, um, if you want to test it, but not with the simulator, just to see if everything's working, lights are turning on, and then the stop to stop it. You can even auto run it if you don't want to run it every time you open your simulator. It automatically rep recognizes the simulator and will start running if MobiFlight is open. You also have your MobiFlight modules button. This takes you into the settings um, under MobiFlight modules, and this is where you configure all of your Arduinos. So I have a, an Arduino hooked up right here um, with a switch on pin 2. The switches are recognized as buttons. You can right click for a menu to add buttons. I like doing it this way, it's a little bit quicker. Or you can add them using this menu right here. And also remove devices. Um, and I, f I find the workflow pretty epic. You can basically assign this to any pin it'll let you. Like, I don't know, like 21 and 24. Um, and you can select all of these different devices. This is where you upload your firmware to the Arduino, so you'd flash it so this knows what to do. You have to do that for every change you make here. Uh, and then you can also load a configuration if you have a saved one, um, like I do, or you can save your configuration as a backup. This is kind of like exporting and importing it. These are some of the resources. If you want to donate to the MobiFlight software, that's super awesome uh, to help development because it is open source. There's a super awesome MobiFlight Discord. I ask a ton of questions there whenever I need to. Uh, there's also the MobiFlight YouTube channel uh, that has a bunch of the release reviews and stuff. Here's your outputs and inputs tab. An output is anything that the Arduino tells MobiFlight to do. And then an input is anything that you interact with to tell the Arduino what to do. So it's like, who's in charge? For an LED, it's an output because the Arduino does all the work. Another thing, uh, make sure to save your configurations. You can open recent documents here. Uh, I use this a lot when I'm switching in between configurations uh, because it does open the last used one by default. You can also merge two files together into one giant MobiFlight Arduino file, which is pretty cool. And you can also open these from here. Under extra settings, you have the general settings. Um, there's a few things. This is just how many files are shown in the open list. Um, logging is really important. I always set this to debug. I've never really had to use any of these other ones except for like maybe troubleshooting. Um, debug, enable it, and you can also log the joystick axis. So MobiFlight is now compatible with joysticks. So it's pretty cool. You can have a joystick out of the box, um, configure it with MobiFlight, make it do some pretty cool things, just like you would configure an Arduino. But if you want to log joystick axes to see where they are and stuff, you can click this button. It's a little more advanced. I've never used this. Debug shows you whenever a switch happens. So if we exit out of this, we see this menu up here. And we have a switch here. If we flick it, We'll see it just released. So press, release, press, release, press, release. Uh, it shows you whenever a switch presses and releases. Super helpful for debugging. If we go to offline mode, um, we can enable it. This is super helpful for like keyboard commands and other things where you don't want to have to have a simulator to run things. I use this all the time for keyboard commands. So if I'm going to have an Arduino just say, uh, click the H key when it's flicked up, click the I key when it's flipped down. Um, I don't need a simulator connection to run, um, so I'd enable offline mode. That'd basically bypass the run. So if I have it enabled right now, you can see I can run my configurations even if no simulator is conf um, configured here. You'll see FSU IPC and Sim Connect aren't running. This uh, little offline mode light bulb will be lit up if offline mode is on. That might be something. Um, and keep in mind, this doesn't let your simulator connect. So uh, be careful of that. While I'm down here, uh, this is where all of your Arduino modules are. I have this Arduino right here connected. Um, and that's where it shows up, like that you have it connected. Same with simulators. 
There's also beta versions if you want the latest and greatest of Moby Flight, but it might be less stable. And there's the community feedback program if you want to kind of provide data for Moby Flight. You can also choose your language. And here's the config execution speed, like how fast your button clicks register. There's also a test mode speed, and this is how fast your lights turn on and off in test mode. I usually keep it at slow, just so I can individually like see everything is working, the servos are wiping, and stuff like that. Our case modules, uh, we already went over Movie Flight modules. This is a kind of a legacy item. They're disabled by default because not a lot of people use them. So, uh, we have a few things over here. Uh, on the output tab, again, that's all the outputs. You have to activate things before they work. Um, it's kind of something that trips people up sometimes, but you have to click it every time you want something to work. This is kind of helpful for when you're prototyping something, you don't want it to work out of the gate or it might damage a servo, but you do have to click them anytime you want to do anything. So, activate it, give it a name, uh, and then here's like a kind of cool chart. It just shows you all of your information. Flight sim value is the value the flight simulator is reading. And then output value is the value of anything after you've applied a transformation for it. So you like um, change the values around. 